is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to this channel i'm go pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2022 kia telluride courtesy of younger cars in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so they got this one in fresh in on a trade so that is why we are in it today but a couple nice changes for the 2022 model year so of course i'll be going over those not only that you do get america's best warranty as well being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles then on the powertrain and in my personal opinion this is an extremely good looking suv as well and so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 telluride first one being the lx starting at thirty-three thousand three hundred ninety dollars s trim starting at thirty-five thousand eight hundred ninety dollars ex which is the one we are in today starting at thirty-eight thousand three hundred ninety dollars and lastly the sx starting at forty-three thousand two hundred ninety dollars by the way that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration if you wanted to add all wheel drive simply add two thousand dollars to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the telluride is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.8 liter direct injected v6 putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 5200 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.1 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 26 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 24 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration here at our telluride i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there is a drive mode knob located directly behind the shifter those drive modes will include comfort eco sport and smart adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity and so now i haven't got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put the telluride here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 kia telluride here up to speed here we go oh my gosh <laughs> i forgot to tell you guys we're in a front wheel drive model so <laughs> it's a lot of power being sent to the front wheels that's why you might have heard a little bit of skidding there because with all wheel drive models that i've tested in the past you don't get that and the good thing is again with the front wheel drive model you do get a little better mpg so if you wanted a larger suv with better mpgs maybe that's one reason to go with the front wheel drive but you do get a little bit of slippage there as you may have heard when you hit the gas with all the power that this thing has so i did want to mention that but having said that no issues with merging onto the highway definitely not going to have any issues there but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it's going to come in at an insanely impressive 118 feet and that actually might have been the first thing i noticed when i hopped in the telluride previously in the past whenever i drive kia or hyundai they're traditionally they're going to have a softer braking feel but that's not what i got here the second i hopped in the telluride this thing has a very firm bite to the brake which I love it kind of feels more along the lines of a sports sedan than an SUV if I'm being honest so I absolutely love the braking feel on this thing it instantly brings you to a stop and that's honestly something that you want when you have an SUV with three rows because more than likely you're going to have kids in the back and if you have to come to a quick stop you don't want something that's going to stop in upper 130s you want something that's going to stop basically in 118 feet like the Telluride so it's really a safety feature in itself in terms of the braking feel and how quickly this thing is going to come to a stop so i'm a huge fan of the braking on the telluride but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's honestly been perfectly fine 100 soaking up hagerstown's road imperfections quite nicely and honestly the roads here are pretty nice <laughs> if i'm being honest but still this thing is absorbing the road imperfections very nicely so a very smooth ride in the telluride without a doubt as far as steering feel goes it is a noticeable difference honestly depending upon which drive mode that you put it in so i'm still in sport right now it's got a heavier feel to it but let me go ahead and take it out let me put it in eco and you can definitely tell the difference it instantly loosens up that steering feel so 
quite a substantial difference and really it's something for everybody that so if you want to have your steering feel you got it if you want a looser steering feel you got that too so i do like that so touching on cabin noise we are going 54 miles per hour right now there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin there's a slight bit of road noise but other than that wind noise is pretty much subdued and that's due in part because there's an acoustic laminated front windshield that comes standard for all trim levels of the telluride not only that if you were to go with the ex or sx trims you're going to get acoustic laminated front window glass as well so even more added sereneness in the cabin here we do have the ex again so we do have that as well so wind noise is definitely subdued so i'm a huge fan of that touching on visibility honestly i can see perfectly fine out the back and one of the best parts about that rear visibility is that the third row headrests tuck in so if you don't have any passengers in that third row like is quite often the case if you just have two kids in the middle row maybe it is a good thing that they tuck down because it definitely increases visibility and the third row headrest and some other manufacturers i can tell you are quite beefy so I absolutely love the setup that the Telluride has there. Not only that, rain sensing windshield wipers are going to be optional on the SX and also optional on the SX will be a head up display, displaying your speed, speed limit and safety features up in your windshield. And you can actually change the color of that head up display as well. You could choose between like a lime green an orange and a white. So that is pretty cool as well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. So go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2020 Kia Telluride. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2022 Kia Telluride. And for anybody who is curious, the uh, refreshed look or the slight redesign is coming for the 2023 model year. So my question to you all, put it in the comments, do you buy this now or do you wait for the 2023 refreshed Telluride? But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on the Telluride here. You do have that new 2022 specific Kia logo up front. Definitely still love the new Kia logo. I think it looks so darn good. So much better than the previous one, at least. Telluride lettering found on the front portion of that hood, of course. You do have a gloss black front grille with chrome surrounds for the LX. However, if you were to go with the S trim level and up, we'll get that gloss black front grille with satin chrome surround. So that is currently, of course, what you guys are looking at right now. There is also a nightfall edition. Did want to mention that, and that essentially finishes everything in a gloss black. So if you wanted to go that route, just underneath, you actually do have a front skid plate coming standard for all trim levels as well. To the sides, projector beam halogen headlights coming with the LX, S, and EX. And so, as I've been mentioning to you guys, we do have the EX trims. So you're probably wondering why you're currently looking at LED headlights. So, did want to mention LED projector headlights come standard with the SX. It is optional for the EX with a premium package, it's called. It goes for $1,695. Gives you a bunch of different things, including the LED headlights, 20 inch machine finished alloy. So, I'll show you guys those in a second. Low profile roof rails, captain's chair seating. I'm going to be showing that to you guys later in this video as well. And a 50 50 split second row to go along with all of that. So, quite a bit within that premium package. But, automatic feature, of course, coming with the headlights as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. And if you want it automatic high beams, they will come standard on the SX and then optional on the EX. And we do have that because they come with the LED headlights. But anyways, if you're looking for fog lights down below, they will be had with the SX trim level only. There is some satin chrome accents found on the lower corners as well as that front lip. And by the way, front air curtains around those lower corners as well, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. So that is very nice. And for anybody who is curious what Telluride actually is or what it means, this vehicle was named after a famous ski town in Colorado. So I want to mention that as well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Telluride. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. So but now since we are around to the side of this one, low profile roof rails coming with the S, EX, and SX trim levels. Silver roof rails coming with the S, and the EX and then you will find satin chrome roof rails for the SX trim but then satin chrome window surrounds will come standard satin chrome accents on the side skirts then as well when it comes to the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with LED integrated turn signals all of that coming standard for all trims by the way then if you were to go with the EX or SX trims you will get power folding side mirrors then the SX is going to add in addition to that a reverse tilt down feature then as well so you don't run over any bicycles perhaps or anything like that but let's take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys in silver coming with the LX trim 18 inch machine finished alloys coming with the EX 20 inch machine finished alloys coming with the S 20 inch black finished alloys then coming with the SX with 
course the EX trim level that we have today having those optional 20 inch wheels that come with the premium package but pretty much rounds out the side profile now let's go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back at the very top you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course you got the new Kia badging once again tell your red lettering spelled out horizontally you will find LED tail lights for the EX and SX trim levels if you wanted some added illumination at night there you do have a single exhaust outlet down below for the LX and by the way the LX exhaust configuration is going to be tucked away wanted to mention that because that's not what you guys are currently looking at today we have a single exhaust outlet with dual satin chrome tips that comes with the S EX and SX trim level so having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip Now, since we are around to the back of the Telluride, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate for the EX and SX trim levels. And the cool thing is about that power tailgate, you can actually speed it up or you could leave it at normal. So there's two speeds essentially, the normal speed and the fast speed. If you put it on the fast speed, Kia says it's the fastest opening rear tailgate that is out there on the market right now. So if you're always in a hurry, Kia's got you covered. But anyways, there is a button on the key fob that's one way to open it up. There's a button on the tailgate itself and a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. In addition to that, you can actually customize the height. So if you're a taller or shorter individual, you can customize the height of that real tailgate to help you out. So didn't want to mention that as well. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity behind the third row comes in at an even 21 cubic feet, which is actually pretty impressive behind a third row. If that was not enough space, those rear seats do fold down. Behind the second row, then it comes in at even 46 cubic feet. By the way, there is a pull lever to fold down that third row. It's very easy to use, so it's very easy to fold down that third row i'll say that then with all roofs folded that is going to come in at a very impressive 87 cubic feet so there's actually buttons then in the cargo area to fold down that second row so that is one option if you wanted to go that route for comparison's sake hyundai palisade comes in at 86.4 cubic feet honda pilot comes in at 83.9 cubic feet and then the ford explorer comes in at 87.8 cubic feet so has more cargo space than the palisade and the pilot and just slightly less than the explorer if you were doing with some comparison shopping perhaps. But so then also wanted to mention in that cargo area, you will find in-floor storage. There are some grocery bag hooks and there is a 12 volt power outlet as well and by the way the in-floor storage is pretty substantial a lot more than most other suvs that i test out so decent amount there so big fan but anyways let's go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom starting with a third row legroom that is going to come in at 31.4 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in that third row actually decent actually it was able to fit and the second row seats are adjustable so you can move them forward a little bit if you did have a taller individual in the third row so it's definitely doable believe it or not so big fan of that do want to also mention though the telluride comes in either seven or eight passenger seating the seven passenger seating meaning the captain's chairs are going to come with the s and sx trims and then optional on the ex because again the premium package is going to give us those captain's chairs that we have today in that third row you're going to find three seats either way so that's why i wanted to mention that a lot of three Three row SUV sometimes will put two seats in that third row so I do like that it has three seats there also rear ventilation can be found on the ceiling of the Telluride so all three rows are going to be able to stay comfortable there third row cup holders do come standard and USB charging ports actually come standard in the third row as well meaning both sides of the third row get a USB charging port to maybe for kids to charge up their tablets. So I was a huge fan of seeing that. So well done Kia for that. And by the way, if you were to get in on the side of the Telluride to get into the third row, if you have captain's chairs, of course, you can just walk up the center, but there is actually a button on the second row seats. You just press that and everything automatically goes forward. So you're easily able to walk into that third row. So again, very smart decision there from Kia. That was very nice. And there's seatbelt coat hangers as well to even make it even easier 
easier to kind of tuck those second row seat belts out of the way. So Kia thought of everything here, so big fan. But so then making our way to the second row legroom, that's gonna come in at 42.4 inches. So for reference, again, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row. Second row seats, by the way, are reclining. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. If you go with the eight passenger configuration, meaning with three seats in the middle there, also a 115 volt power outlet available, 12 volt power outlet. USB charging ports though, are not located underneath of the ventilation there, but rather on the side of the front seats. I actually am a big fan of this. Reason being is because when you have the setup where the USB charging ports are located underneath of that rear ventilation, a lot of times if you have kids walking up into the third row, they step on the USB charging ports and mess up the cables or they mess up the connections. So the fact that they're on the rear seats with a little coat hook and then a place to put your cell phone, I think it's a brilliant design and Kia really thought that one out. So it's not gonna get hacked up or anything like that. So big fan of that, but rear window sunshades coming with the EX and SX trims. It's always nice if you're driving a newborn home from the hospital, you have small kids or something like that and heated and ventilated rear seats are gonna be optional on the SX trim. So pretty much thought of everything for those rear passengers. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats. Manually adjustable front seats come with the LX trim. Eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar coming with the S trim level and up. However, if you go with the SX, you will get a 10-way power adjustable driver seat with power lumbar. Syntex upholstery is gonna come with the LX and the S trims. Leather seating coming with the EX and SX trims. Heated front seats coming with the S trim level and up. And then ventilated front seats coming with the EX and the SX trims and as far as seat comfort goes definitely extremely comfortable seating the reason i say that is the power lumbar is done extremely well it's a very nice adjustment that was really able to help me find my perfect driving position the fact that we got ventilated front seats as well by the way it's located just by the uh, driver's right knee or the passenger's left knee so it's a little bit different placement than most other vehicles but that's where they're going to be located but seating comfort was perfectly fine and so then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board and then heated is going to be optional on the ex and sx trims if you wanted to go that route then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your kia logo on the one side essentially all of your buttons are located on the side of the key with the exception of that remote start which is located above the kia logo that's going to come standard as well but lock unlock and that lock button by the way is the uh large button at the very top you can just simply press it with your thumb but essentially it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like a digital speedometer there's trip a trip b your driving mode can be located up there how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature the list goes on but essentially to sum it up everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges at least but now make your way to overall interior quality power sunroof coming with the s trim level and the ex we do have that of course today led map lights coming with the s trim level and up there is a premium headliner that's going to be optional on the sx kind of feels like suede but it's just super soft i remember testing that maybe two years ago wireless phone charger coming with the ex and the sx trims home light controls coming with the sx trim level only dual zone climate control coming with the ex and sx wood green interior accents coming with those two trims as well that can be found just below the infotainment screen as well as just above the passenger side glove box and on the doors then as well overhead sunglass holders going to come with all trim levels across the board and if you were to go with the sx trim you will get stainless steel pedals and door sills as well but overall just in front of the shifter you do have a couple usb charging ports and 12 volt power outlet and a decent amount of storage there's a wireless phone charger is going to be located there as well just to the right of the shifter you got a little bit of storage dual cup holders you do have a electromechanical parking brake behind the shifter as well and actually a decent amount of storage within the center armrest including a 12 volt power outlet in there as well and again the authentic wood trim definitely makes things look a little more upscale in the telluride and quite honestly these buttons located just above the dual zone climate control that is taken straight off of genesis i could tell you that having reviewed just about every genesis out there at this point so 
Very nice interior quality, if I'm being honest, for the Tellurides. Absolutely no complaints from me. Then taking a look at the infotainment screen, this is probably the main change for the 2022 Telluride, besides the logos, I guess, is the 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display is now newly standard for every single trim level across the board. Whereas before, I think it was an eight inch screen came standard, and then this was the upgraded version, but now this is standard across the board. So that's pretty cool. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard as well. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system, System actually comes standard across the board as well you do have quiet mode up there meaning it eliminates the rear speakers if the kids are sleeping in the back maybe and then limits the speakers to i believe it's a volume of seven in the front so you don't risk waking up the kids in the back so that's a pretty cool feature you have your ambient lighting adjustments up there as well there is a voice memo system if you wanted to record your voice and you didn't want to forget something perhaps you could play it back at a later date there's also sounds of nature which is one of my favorite features in all hyundai's and kia's out there you got lively forest calm sea waves rainy day open air cafe warm fireplace and snowy village so having said that i'm gonna let you guys listen to that real quick and uh, i'll be right back It's up in another thing I wanted to mention, of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems on the Telluride, six speakers coming with the LX, S, and EX trims. However, for the SX, you get a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, but it's not the one we have today. But having said that, I do like the little Telluride lettering found on the speaker covers here on the doors here. But nonetheless, we do have the six speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, it's not bad. Honestly, that was more bass than I expected. I think that's what surprised me the most. And I say it's not bad because six speakers traditionally doesn't sound all that great, especially in the size of the Telluride, you wouldn't think it would be. But it's actually not bad, if I'm being honest. That was a decent sound system for the Telluride. So last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Telluride in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the 2022 Kia Telluride is an IIHS top safety pick with the equipped LED headlights. So you do have to go with the SX or the premium package for the EX to get that top safety pick rating. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. There is a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but that's the boring stuff. The fun stuff is there is a massive boost to the standard safety for 2022 that comes standard for all trim levels across the board. Yet another big change for 2022. All of these safety features will include forward collision warning, forward collision avoidance assist, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, lane following assist, navigation based smart cruise control, highway driving assist, driver attention warning system, rear parking sensors, and safe exit assist then as well. In addition to that, if you were to go with the SX trim, that's gonna add to that front parking sensors, a surround view monitor, and a blind spot view monitor as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 telluride great standard safety that's a heck of a lot of standard safety features that come standard across the board great ride quality as well i think i said that on my previous review of the telluride i really am impressed with how smooth this thing rides good bit of space 87 cubic feet total is pretty darn impressive like i said that's more than the pilot i think it's more than the highlander i know it's slightly more than the palisade so definitely a good bit of space great styling as well but i will say the 2023 styling it looks similar but i think that like i like the redesign of the headlights for 2023 so again put in the comments whether you're waiting for 2023 or you're going to be getting a 2022 but either way it still looks good but digital gauges i think is the one thing that's missing in my personal opinion i think the digital gauges like that the uh that hyundai puts in like all their vehicles would look awesome here and the telluride and sister brother sister companies or however you want to put it they can easily do that i just want to see them do it but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new telluride in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.